Hello, so today we're working on logarithmic functions. Um, you'll see that we are going to go between logarithmic functions and exponential functions. We're going to evaluate logarithmic functions, talk about the common logarithmic and the natural logarithmic, identify domains for logarithmic functions, um, and talk about graphing a logarithmic function and what that looks like. So. Um, this is the definition for a logarithmic function. One of the really important parts of this definition is the fact that y equals log base b x is equal to b to the y equals x. And you'll see here we call this the base just like we call this the base on an exponent. So that helps you remember where things go when you're going from one function to the other because logarithmic functions and exponential functions are inverses of one another. So the common log and the natural log are um, logarithmics that we use pretty frequently to the point to where you have a button on your calculator for both. The, log, the common log is base 10 and the natural logarithmic is base e. So um, this shows some examples of how to go from logarithmic function um, to exponential form. And so again, I want you to see that base on the log is your base for your exponent. The solution to your log is the exponent that you're using. And then what you're taking the base of is your solution for your exponent function. So let's take a look and do a couple together. So if we're looking here, our base is seven, the solution is y, and then we're taking the base of four x. So this is what it looks like an exponential function. Here, if we're using the natural log, you have to remember that this is base e that's going on there. So this is e to the four t equals 30 when we follow the same rule. And then anytime we see a log that doesn't have a base written on it, we know that that's the common log, which is base 10. So we're going to get 10 to the negative x equals m in this case. So just like we can go from logarithmic form to exponential form, we can go from exponential form to logarithmic form using the same um, rule, essentially. So let's do some examples of that. So if we have 8 to the 1 third equals 2, that means that our base from the exponent is our base for our log, and then our solution is what we're taking the log of, and our exponent is our new solution. Same thing here, we're using e, so we're going to take the natural log of 2,000 to give us t. And then on this last one, this is the common log because it's base 10 in the exponent, for the exponent portion. So we're going to have log 300 equals 2x. So this shows how we can evaluate logarithmic functions. What you need to realize is when you're thinking about a log, it just means um, what do I need to take 10 to the power of to get 100 in this first example? Well, we know 10 squared equals 100. So we can use that logic to help us solve these problems. So if I wanted to evaluate log 3, uh, log base 3, 81, it's the idea here that we know that this is equal to something. I don't, I don't know what that something is, but I know it's equal to something, so I can write it as 3 to the x equals 81. When I do that, I'm just trying to get 3 as my base on the right-hand side so that I can say x is equal to whatever that exponent is. So if I think about 81 using a factor tree, 9 times 9 gives me 81, and 3 times 3 gives me 9. So we have one, two, three, four threes here. So we get three to the x equals three to the fourth. And so essentially these kind of cancel each other out and we're left with x equals four. We can do the same thing on this next one. We can say, okay, that has to be equal to some value. So we have four to the x is equal to one over 16. 
Well, if we think about that, the 16 doesn't feel like a problem, right? The square root of 16 is 4. So we just know 4 squared would give us 16. But we have 1 over 16. So you have to remember that that negative on an exponent drops it to the bottom. So we could rewrite this as 4 to the x equals 1 over 4 to the square here because we know 4 squared is 16. So then 4 to the x equals 4 to the negative 2 here to make it to where there's no fraction. So we get x is equal to negative 2. So same thing here, we're using the common log, so we're doing 10 to the x, I'm just saying that's equal to x, is equal to 100. Well, we know 10 to the x is the same thing as 10 squared if we want to write 100 over. So then our x is equal to 2 in this case. And then finally, if we say this is equal to x, 25 to the x equals 5. Well, if you think about this, and you think about what you already know about 25 and 5, 5 is the square root of 25. Just a refresher, exponent form, if you have the square root of a number, that's the same thing as saying that number to 1 over whatever that is or square here, square root one half. So if you had a cube root, then that would be one over three. So in this case, 25 to the X is equal to 25 to the one half here. Um, so X is equal to one half because the square root of five is 25. All right, so some basic properties just to remind you, basic properties with logarithmics. If we have log base b of b, that's equal to 1 because of this exponential rule here. If we have log base b 1, that's equal to 0 because of this exponential rule here. One thing I want you to realize is the inverse property of logarithmics. If we take our base and then take log b to the x of our base here. This basically cancels out. b to the log of b is the same. It, it's saying inverse, right? So we end up with just x there. So let's look at a few examples. So if I wrote this one and I said, okay, there's an x right there. I get 6 to the x equals 6. This cube here we know can be written as 1 third because we just reviewed that. So... If we take the log, um, we're just doing these logs are canceling, right? Just like what we talked about before. So same thing here. We can write this one as 7 to the x equals 7. So x equals 1. 10 to the x equals 10. So x equals 1. And e to the x equals 1. So x equals 0. All right. So if we take a look here, we're using that same rule. This 5 to the log base 5 cancels right here, and we're left with 3x when we simplify. ln and e cancel, and we're left with x. Common log and 10 cancel, and we're left with x plus 1. So you can refer to this. This just goes over the common logarithmics and the general properties. It's just rewriting them so you can see them in the common logarithmic form. Same thing here, except for we're looking at the natural logarithmic form. So just like when we talked about exponents, we went over the characteristics of exponents again. So these are the characteristics of logarithmic functions. You can pause this and take a look for yourself. I talked about at the beginning how logarithmics and exponentials were inverses of each other. So if we take f of x is equal to 3 to the x and g of x is equal to log 3x, and we graph both of those. So we find the points for both of those, and then we graph both of those. We can see that, that uh, those two functions are inverses because they reflect across the y equals x line. Um, so this is just an idea of that logarithmic and how they work, especially when they're compared to their inverse function exponentials. 
So this is the um, definition for the domain of the logarithmic function. What's really important here is to realize that g of x has to be greater than or, uh, greater than zero. So whatever you're taking the log of here has to be greater than zero. So if we wanted to find what our domain is here, whatever we're taking the log of has to be greater than zero. So if we solve then for x, x has to be greater than five. So our domain is from five to infinity. Five is not included there because x has to be greater than that value. I assume you all know how to use your calculator to solve this. If you don't have a calculator, remember you can always uh, access free calculators through the links on Blackboard. You can also go to noomworks.com and use their free calculator online. Um, so just a refresher there. So I am going to write these answers and then you can go back and put them in your calculator and see what you get. You should get does not exist here or an error message because minus three, that has to be greater than zero, right? That's negative. We can't take the log of a negative number. And so I will finish writing out the rest of these for you. And you can go try these on your own and make sure that you are using your calculator appropriately. So let's do a couple of applied problems to end 4.2. So the percentage of adult heights attained by a boy who is X years old can be modeled by F of X equals 29 plus 48.8 log X plus one, where X represents the boy's age from five to 15 and F of X represents the percentage of his adult height. Approximately what percent of his adult height has a boy attained at age 10? So if we do F of 10, we get 29 plus 48.8 log of 10 plus 1, which is approximately 80%. And all I would do there is put that in the calculator just as it is, and it will give me approximately 80%. <coughs> Last one here. When the outside air temperature is anywhere from 72 degrees to 96 degrees Fahrenheit, the temperature in an enclosed vehicle climbs 43 degrees in the first hour. The function f of x equals 13.4 ln of x minus 11.6 models the temperature increase in degrees Fahrenheit after x minutes. Use the function to find the temperature increase to the nearest degree after 30 minutes. So we're just evaluating this function at 30. And when I do that in my calculator, I get approximately 34 degrees. All right, that concludes 4.2. So the next time we're together, we will work on 4.3.